After riding three days and three nights, Stoney and I finally arrived at our destination, Borderline. 1879 was the year of this story. Well, Stoney, I guess this is where we separate. You know, I still don't like playing the part of the tramps. Why, you lost the toss, didn't you? You and that two-headed dollar. Hey, keep your credentials and your gun on you, but keep them out of sight. Don't worry, I'll be the worst-looking saddle tramp that ever rode into this country. Now, don't forget we understand each other. We meet in St. George, Utah. Yeah. From what the commissioner tells me, looks like we're riding right smack into a second civil war. Yeah, we've got to find the murder of that U.S. Marshal Simcoe. Well, here goes a bum. Hey, when we get into town, one thing, we don't know each other. That's for sure. Long story. another meeting at the Night Riders tonight, sir, when darkness falls. We expect you to be there, and this is your last warning. You and your Night Riders, you make nothing but trouble for honest people. I told you before, I'll have no truck with you. If you do not join us, sir, you will be sorry. I'll take a chance on that. Why don't you take your mask off? I want to know who I'm talking to. been making all the trouble. The respectable Mr. Randall. You're going to be sorry about this, sirs. You're a crook, Randall. You're the man that killed that United States Marshal. You know too much. And the sight of my face is the last thing you are going to see on Earth. you folks have here. State line right down the middle. Not very friendly, are you? It's 
Ben Sayer. I found him out by the water hole. He's dead. Found him. How do we know you didn't kill him? You think I'd have brought him in like this if I had him? You friends of his? Good friend. Well, and uh, I'll let you take care of the body. And if I can help you find who did it, why, well, I'd be very happy to. outside, I had nothing to do with it. He was dying. You got a choice. You can admit you did it, or you die right here. I'm giving you five seconds. I'm giving you a choice. Put that fork down, or I'll put a bullet right through your heart. Thanks, stranger, but it wasn't necessary. Now get out! All right. All right. Really. Saddle Tramp, you're a mighty fast with a six gun, friend. I had to be. But why the hidden gun? Are you on the run from the law? That comes under the head of being a very personal question, oh, mister. No offense. It's just that I might have something interesting for a man like you. Well, that's different. My mother always told me when somebody talked like that to listen hard twice. Your mother was a very smart woman. Hang around. I'll be back later on to talk about it. I'll be here. You must be hungry, my friend. Help yourself to some coal cuts. Coal? I'd give ten dollars gold if the stuff was hot. Ten bucks? Hey, uh, pour me a glass of water. Yes, sir. Now, beg pardon, sir. That'll be one dollar. This is a free lunch. But a dollar for a glass of water. about you getting mixed up in a killing. Not guilty. Have you any idea who did it? No, when I found a man, he was dying. I kept saying something about a boot. I, uh, stopped on the way in and dug this out of him. It's a 41 caliber. Notice my, uh, new friend? The one with the pitchfork? No, the gunslinger. He's handing out favors. Gave me a job because I'm fast with a gun. String along with him. You may be able to find out something. I've got to go into St. George and see the sheriff. I'll see you later. Right. Ten bucks for hot food, huh? Well, hot food is what he's going to get. Got a job for you. What and how much? Oh, you like it all right. The hours are easy and the pay is good. Now that's the kind of a job I really like. Fine. Why don't you sit down and finish your chow? How much you say was in it? Don't worry about it. There'll be plenty of in it for all of us. And the good part of it is that the longer it goes on, the better. Ah! Whoa! 
Hey, what's the big idea? Well, well, you said you wanted hot food, and and you were willing to pay ten dollars for it. So I fixed it so your food would be hot. So you owe me twenty dollars now. Twenty dollars? What for? Um, ten dollars for the hot food and ten dollars for the water. Ten dollars for that? Oh, wait a minute. Zerba! You don't want that! I'm gonna kill you! Yes, sir. Sure, Carter? That's right. My name is Pat Gallagher, sir, federal agent. I'm here to investigate the death of United States Marshal Simcoe. Oh, well, I'm glad to know you, Gallagher. Happy to know you, sir. This is Tom Randall. How do you do, sir? How are you, Gallagher? Randall works for the government, too. He's a revenue man for southern Utah and the northern Arizona Territory. I've heard up around Denver that you men were having quite a bit of trouble down this way. Well, they only told you the half of it. We've got a crazy masked man in these parts that's causing all kinds of trouble. Has his own band of hooded riders burning down buildings, beating up people. The minute he makes a raid, he gets over to the Arizona Territory. That's out of my jurisdiction. And no one knows who he is? No, but he's sure causing folks a lot of trouble. And it's about time someone did something about it. That's why I'm here, gentlemen. That's good. It's out of my hands. As a federal officer, you have jurisdiction to go anywhere. That's right. You know, gentlemen, these raids and murders continue. Maybe some time before... This territory is taken into the Union. Uh, friends of yours? No, why? Well, you seem interested in them. Well, I'm just interested because I'm looking for the killer of Marshal Simcoe. Well, I don't know much about Simcoe's death, but there's one thing I can tell you. He died from a 41 caliber bullet. A 41? Thanks, sir. Nice to see you, Mr. Randall. Goodbye. I'm mighty glad you came by. I'm onto something real big. The Hooded Raider? Yeah, I'm now a member of his gang. Good. Do you know who he is? No, but I know that there's a raid planned for tomorrow. Well, where do they plan to strike? Right here in St. George. Do you know where they're leaving from? I don't know, but uh, Benner knows. He's playing it real cagey. I better get back before he gets suspicious. We're riding out of here to a place about five miles down the river, a little shack. That might be the meeting place. I'll go to have a talk with the sheriff. See you later. All right, you better stay here a minute. news. I understand the mass raider is going to raid St. George tomorrow. Now, where'd you hear that? Well, I'm not at liberty to say at the moment, sir. Well, I've been wondering how soon the mass raider would strike you. Tell me, why would he want to strike this town? Well, all the territorial money due the government is in the bank, over $50,000. And if what you say is true, Gallagher, there's some checking I better do. I'll see you later. Raid St. George tonight. Those fanatical fools. I'll get some men. Sure. 
That smell like gunpowder? Yeah, where'd you get it? Off of Randall's boot. Boots? I don't get it, Gallagher. Hey, I didn't either until just now. I made an awful mistake. I'll see you later, sure. This is the new man. That's right. And he can sure handle himself, too. And hey, what's the idea? Next time, be more careful of the men you pick, Benner. This one happens to be a federal agent. What? Why, you... You know what we do with spies. Take care of it. Then join me at the border house. But you know something? I'm mighty glad to see you right. Did you get a look at the mass rider? Yeah, I sure did. And they're planning another raid tonight at the border house. Hey, they gave me an outfit, and there's a whole lot of them up there in the shack. Good. We'll make a visit to that border house. But first, I've got to go in town. All right. Back to St. George, but I'm going to get dry first. know the combination of that safe in the courthouse besides Randall? No, what? We've got to get in it, but fast. Come on. Is the money there, Sheriff? It's gone. I guess our hunch was right, Stoney. Come on, let's get out of here. See you later, Sheriff. Sure. Get the 
St. George one hour after it gets dark. And I want one thing understood. We ride right into the heart of the town before we start anything. Open up, Dakin. You men raid St. George tonight, and you're riding into a trap. These men are spies. Take off their hoods. They're legions. Take them out and hang them. All right. Stand back there. Drop those guns. You men don't know what you're doing. We know what we're doing, all right. We're making this a better country around here. How, with mob rule? You're being led by a man that's nothing but a thief and a killer. You're a liar. Well, this man never hurt anybody in his whole life. Why, he doesn't even carry a gun. He's been using you to cover up for his own crookedness. He steals, and you get to blame for it. You men ride into St. George tonight, there'll be thousands of dollars of revenue money missing to buy tomorrow morning. Because he's already stolen it. He's making criminals out of all of you for his own profit. Still think he doesn't carry a gun? That's the same weapon that he used to kill United States Marshal Simcoe and your friend Sayers. Why, it's Randolph! Yes, you didn't know that, did you? Mr. Randall, the revenue collector. He wanted you to burn the building where he kept the money. That proves what I said is true, doesn't it? He's right. Let's string him up. Hold it, you men. There'll be no lynching. I'm arresting this man and holding him for a fair trial. How can you hold him under arrest? You ain't in Utah, you're in Arizona. Utah or Arizona makes no difference. My partner and I have unlimited warrant. Say, suppose we set fire to this rat's nest of a building. It belongs to Randall. That wouldn't bother the laws of the United States, none, would it? No, no. Now, don't let him do it. Don't let him set fire to this building. Why, Randall? You got the tax money hidden here? Is that the reason why? The revenue money? I don't know what you're talking about. You'd like to buy a freedom with part of that, wouldn't you? Well, you tell me where it is, or by heavens, I'll let them hang you. All right. All right, I'll tell you. There's a loose board over there, back of the bar. Stoney. All right, I'll get it. You're all right. Good. I'm arresting you for a lot of things, Randall. But the most important one is the murder of United States Marshal Simcoe. And I can prove it. Hey, Pat, did you really mean it when you said you were going to let these guys hang him? I was in a tough spot, Stoney. I had to pull a bluff. <laughs> That's for sure. You know, you men saved us an awful lot of trouble and misery. And I want you to know that we feel mighty obliged to you for it. That's part of our job. Just don't let anybody else talk you into taking the law in their own hands. It just doesn't work. No, sir. We've learned our lesson. We don't need a new one. All right, let's get out of here, Randall. Mount up. You all set, Stoney? That's for sure. If you say that's for sure once more, watch out. Watch out? I will. That's for sure. <laughs> well, let's get out of here. 